Charles Vernon. I play bass trombone with the Philadelphia Orchestra. And when I went uh, to see you the first time in uh, 1969, I believe it was, I was going with the aspect of thinking that I was going to become the greatest player in the world in about five minutes after seeing you, after hearing of you and everything. And uh, when I came in there, I was playing, uh, I was a tenor trombonist at that time, and I played a Rochu for you, uh, the number two Rochu. And I played it, and it, it was not very good. But I remember you told me to think about what would the greatest trombonist in the world sound like. Take a picture, put a picture in your head of all the players that you would think uh, their sounds that you like and all this kind of stuff and put it in your head. And that, at that moment when you said that, my first reaction was, what is he talking about? You know, what, you know, because I was expecting to learn how to play, you know, like you were talking earlier. Sure. But, but, but you were pretty insistent, and, uh, and sure. I remember you, you asked me to close my eyes and really think about that sound. And I did that, and I thought about that first C, and it was like a completely different player. I made right. it to, I got the C and barely made it to the A, and by the time <laughs> I was to the C, I was back to the, where I was before. But, but what, I was, what I'm getting at is just the, the concept of, uh, I got it for one note at one point, and, and uh, over the years, I think you I've been transfer. able to transfer that to uh, the other end of it, but I really appreciate but that. You'll never know how you did it. This is the I remarkable know. thing, is that you're never going to have feedback of the type necessary to know what you're doing in terms of physical function. Nor You'll is know it important. what you're doing in terms of musical function. Mm -hmm. And the important thing, again, the product of all inputs for your instrument is sound that comes out the bell. Being a human being, you always go by the sound that comes out the, in other words, you go by the end of end product. Just catch this bun. Then you describe how you do it. You know what I mean? I can't see it, so you'll have to hand it to me. <laughs> but, uh, do it with one hand. Just, just pick it up. You'll never know how you do these things. You do them. The human body works on the study of products. In other words, what are you trying to accomplish? You want to put a step, uh, walk in that direction? Walk. Don't go by this muscle and that muscle and the chain of command that permits the skeletal structure to move. But you do it by what you want to accomplish. If I want to drink a little water, skull. I take a little drink, and I don't go by the various phenomena because it's not just the deltoids. It's not this muscle or that muscle in the hand. It's there are many changes all over the body to do what I just did. You leave the complexity alone, and like the jungle child doing dances and flute, go to the product of music. Don't figure how you're going to do it. Let the people who are going into medicine study how you do it. It's nice. I'm perfectly willing to work with any student and give them any knowledge that I have as to uh, structure. But function is a different study. There we go into Dr. Kirshner's field of psychodynamics, thoughts that are going to stimulate motor responses. This is what we use in the art form. And believe me, I was a very successful player before I knew anything about this. I can't do anything today that I couldn't do when I was <coughs> 25 years old or 20 years old. I've had string players. You mentioned the cello player. I've had violinists come in. I was able to help one with a tremolo because he had arthritis and he was having terrible problems in uh, the forearm. And so we started focusing the, his function based on the string and the hair of the bow where it functions. There again, we go to the product. What are you trying to accomplish? As he started working in this end, there was letting go of the muscles here. And pretty soon he was functioning very nicely with the fingers and the bow and without the tremendous contractions and the forearm, you know. So this is sort of a form of physical th physiotherapy, and it can be applied in many, many different dimensions. And with music, I apply it the way I perceive it, you know, with the individual. After all, when you take whether it's trumpet or trombone or tuba, what does it take to vibrate a pair of chops? You don't have to have athletic strength to vibrate the lip. You see what I mean? And yet the horn responds to the vibration of the lip on certain frequencies. <laughs> it doesn't have to be right, you know, and, but it can still sound awfully good. So in, you know, simplifying this whole subject, my teaching, again, is to come down in the states of complexity 
to find the functions and the simplicity where they belong. You play with the use of air, of course. You play with the lip as a vibrating source. You play with the instrument based on the phenomena of music. But above everything else, you have to think within your art form. But isn't that a factor, though, that a musician will learn so much by hearing others and by conceiving. The only warning I give is don't listen so much to yourself. Play for somebody else and then listen to playbacks and, or recognize you're still hearing yourself but with a low percentage of your concentration. So the massive concentration, like I'm doing with you people today, is communicating. I can hear myself, but I'm not concentrating on what I sound like. I'm concentrating on very complex thoughts because you're answer, asking very complex questions. And uh, if I didn't know my subject well, I would be in trouble up here. <laughs> but uh, I, fortunately, I do know it well. So I have no time to concentrate on laryngeal and pharyngeal and lingual, all the activities of muscles and respiration. I have to concentrate on messages. And of course, this is pretty much what happens with the instrument. You must concentrate always on talking to your audience instead of with vocal language, speech language. You do it with the musical language of your instrument. But you have to have a message for somebody else. The worst thing is to be asking questions at the moment you should be issuing statements. That's important. <laughs> Thank you.